Welcome, everybody, to And That's Why We Drink. Uh, the last two weeks, you have found yourself with a couple of gals from Wine and Crime, and now we are hitting the trifecta. Oh, wait. Now I have to use my windscreen. <laughs> you <laughs> look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> um, I am at my mom's house, and uh, I'm in a room with hardwood floors, and so I have to manually use this pop filter that doesn't have an attachment anymore, so I look very foolish. Will you please <laughs> tell me that you flew with that Marvel background in your <laughs> luggage. Also, by the way, it's Amanda from White and Crime. Oh yeah, <laughs> hi, it's me. Uh, no, so this is actually, this was my room divider when I had a studio in Boston. Oh my god, I love it. And now it lives at your mom's house? And it just, yeah, it just sat in the basement for years. And I was like, what am I going to do with this thing? And my mom refuses to let me get rid of it, which is fine. I don't want to get rid of it. Take it but- back to L.A. <sighs> Allison would kill me. I bought this clearly when I was single. So, <laughs> and so write it off, write the shipping off as a business expense and then get a, put it at your studio. You know what? That's not a bad idea. I actually, it's, you know, what's so weird is I guess. So my mom made this room after she made other rooms mm-hmm. in the house. And so I don't know what she told the contractors, but they, the room divider is exactly six feet tall. And this thing is, tickle in the ceiling right now it's tickle, like tickle baby it, it's exactly meant for this have you seen no way home yet amanda i know, know it's a stupid question but i sure have isn't sh- it amazing by the time this comes out it has been out for like a month so we can talk about it uh, for sure we can uh, talk about it right now if you'd like the the unbridled joy <laughs> The moments where my partner thought I was an absolute looney tune because I was literally being that like white American yelling and clapping oh. with joy in the theater. There's the only the only reason I make sure to go every opening night is because I pray for a theater reaction. That's yep. great. And Allison, look, we got ourselves into a tizzy in our Uh-oh. relationship. We had a speed Uh-oh. bump because of Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Because I've been telling Allison. For like a year now, I was like, December 17th, don't you be busy. Don't be busy. Mm-hmm. Got to be home. And then someone decided they were flying home across the country on December 11th. Not and f- cool. And I was like, this is it, I think. We're- yeah, like, it's- I love you, but <laughs> it's not going to last. It's no. too. Uh, anyway, I'm home now because we broke up. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, but so I don't know how, but even though I was the sad one, I ended up volunteering to meet her on the other side of the country just to see the movie uh, on opening night because I refused to see it not on opening night and I refused to see it without her. And I wasn't going to make her like not be with her family for a week for a movie. I was not going to be that person. So Fine. It, it turned into her brother and sister-in-law joining us. And I was like, profusely apologetic beforehand because i was like you don't know the type of person i'm I am gonna anymore. lose my <laughs> mind in here people i was like you're gonna think it's real stupid so yep. i need you to just ignore whatever you see for the next couple hours and then we can get back back on track yeah but the movie okay so a lot of people are saying it's like the best marvel movie to ever come out i definitely think it's top five i don't know mm-hmm. what my favorite one is but it didn't like break my brain i think because i've been following the theories for so long i like we allison and i expect if if you know who and you know who didn't show up yeah i would have been like what the fuck directors i would have been like you gotta be kidding me everyone wants this okay but like lasagna spider-man oh yeah (laughs) lasagna spider-man's like redemption moment in this movie i wept like a fucking child i was the person screaming in the theater yep. I, okay and yeah no 1, as long as we're on the same page about that we're good i loved that non-lasagna lasagna spider-man let's call him um fettuccine spider-man <laughs> i loved when he was like you're part of the avengers that's great what is that like it yep. was very fun anyway, i love F- fettuccine spider-man like unpopular opinion one okay. of my favorite speed mans i like fettuccine better than lasagna <laughs> Here's the problem. But I like Holland Day's best. That was... I do. I loved that. I see what you did, and I absolutely agree. Okay. I'm just grabbing some juice out of my fridge real quick, because I'm that's, fucking diabetic as hell. It's And that's why we drink. So as long as you're drinking something, you're in the clear. Yeah. I'll, 
Here's my issue. Honestly, okay, so it's it's January. If you are like super about it, you've probably heard the spoilers by now. Uh, so obviously the original Peter Parker's show up. Right. Um, but here's my problem. I really did have like a, a I did not enjoy this part of the movie is that they introduced both of them into the movie so close together mm -hmm. that I was still riding the Andrew high that I didn't even totally process the Toby high. Like, See, I, I get that. Like they really that. within five minutes, both of them appeared. I And obviously once Andrew shows up, you know, Toby's going to be there, but I wanted them to make us wait a little longer. Like I wanted, I wanted Andrew to show up and then we like have like his let him have his moment in the sun and then we don't even know about Toby until there's like the final fight scene and like Tom Holland is about to not make it and all of a sudden like Toby shows up and saves him at the last moment Aww. and then he gets his like full reveal or, or something like that but I know nope. I fully happens... disagree with you really you're not wrong we just do not align interesting because for the I... first time maybe ever Ever. I will, I, even if they just pushed it five minutes further into the that, movie, I would have been happier because it really happened instantly. It was pretty quick, but I think there was this weird part of me that was like, oh, this is so cool. I wonder if Fettuccini's going to show up. I bet he's not. I don't know why. I, in my really? mind, I was like, I was like, there's no way Fettuccini There's no way you can have the role. whole. You can't have the whole yeah. Italian spread without fettuccine. You know exactly. What I mean? But I was like, I doubt it. I don't know. How? If you're going to get one of them, you got to get the other. Can you imagine that... the, the riots in the streets? But <laughs> I just, but like, I think maybe that was just my own brain playing tricks Fair on enough. me so that, because then when fettuccine was served, <laughs> fucking lost it. I, I screamed and I clapped. Like it was so embarrassing it was so embarrassing, but like everyone, everyone basically except my partner and a couple other like sane people in the theater. People who shouldn't like, have been welcome there. Right. Is the we're just thing. like, this is a movie and they can't hear us. So we're not going to do this. We it have was a live theater performance, but whatever. It was incredible. I was so happy. I hear you. I hear you. Also, just... Willem Dafoe. Come on. Snaps for Willem. The bet. The best. Have you seen The Lighthouse? No, but have you seen Antichrist? Oh, yeah. Because that was a wild ride. Listen, have you heard uh, or read the interview from the director of the of Antichrist? Who is oh. that's Lars von Trier, right? Yeah, he's way problematic. Oh, I know. But OK, this interview with him talks about how Willem Dafoe's donger is so frighteningly large that <laughs> that Lars von Trier was like, I we can't use your natural donger. Like this is too. Wait, it was scary. a CGI peen. I think it was a prosthetic. <gasps> Wait, how or do like you hide a big prosthetic in a, how do you hide the big thing in a tiny prosthetic? I assume there was tucking. Okay. And then the prosthetic was adhered to a tuck. I did a not hear that surface. interview. I did not I, hear that. Interview. I will send it to you. It's in print, <laughs> but there's just something so like soothing and lovely about knowing that Willem Dafoe's donger is so terrifyingly large that it couldn't be featured in Antichrist. It's the Green Goblin and the Hobgoblin were attached. Yeah, yes. I guess. It's like, Santa is real. That's like all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the only... Like, because if that's true, then every, the, like, the Easter Bunny has to be real. Like, it's all real. I, it, like, it's so affirming to me to be like, yes, magic is He real. deserves it for all, for everything he's done for his art. He and deserves it. for that it. face, sir. <laughs> the universe, no listen, comment. I'm a Libra. I'm all about balance in the universe. He's got the scariest face. He needs to have a scary, like, mega dogger to balance out that face. I you love it. You know what was scary in the movie is when he really did... He had made some great acting choices as a, as like a crazy unstable person. Yeah, I don't want to use the word crazy, but an unstable person. Where he, he was fucking brilliant. He did such a good job. He was getting punched in the face and cackling. It was mm -hmm. uh, great. Anyway, this was not meant to be a a Marvel Cinematic podcast. Yeah, I'm but sorry. I just also we, haven't we been able to like talk to M on the phone outside of any texting <laughs> That's in true. a really long time. So not only are you here to listen to the acclaimed podcast and that's why we drink you're also just going to be forced into some catch-up and casual relationship love for those of you who don't know Amanda and, I, 
Amanda and I are very close and very uh, much in love. <laughs> very much in love. And uh, talk about like a multiverse, but our variants are somewhere just married off, just running away yeah. on the beach or something, a haunted you're, beach. You're the lasagna to my fettuccine. Oh, or the ho- you know what? It. I'm gonna give. I don't. I like hollandaise better than lasagna, so I'm gonna say you're the hollandaise to my fettuccine. It makes more sense too because it's a weird mix, but it makes mm-hmm. sense at the same time. Also, uh, let's give a shout out for those who can't see, uh, who aren't watching YouTube. Your background is also delicious. It is the Lizzie Borden house. It is. I feel special and seen that you chose that. Or I don't know if it was for me, but you chose it. It was 100% for you. And that is the story we're going with. And it's not that I uploaded this for another thing and don't remember how to turn it off. That has nothing to do with it. Sounds good. I'm, We're good. This was a choice for it you. Felt, it felt, I feel special. So thank mm-hmm. you. What, what type of juice are you drinking today since we're on and that's why we drink? This is cran raspberry juice. Cran raspberry. It's fucking good. I have never heard of cran. I know the, I know the classic cran grape and the, I've heard of also a cran apple, but never the raz. Cran grape is a classic. I yes. always forget that like you're from the South and that things are weird for you. <laughs> Cran grape is very popular. Okay. It's also delicious. If you insist, I I don't know. <laughs> I'm a sucker. I, I like cran apple, but cran raspberry is the one to go with when you're mixing Cosmos. Oh, and it's also noted. really, really, really good just on its own when you have just sat down for a recording and then your insulin pump starts to yell at you that your blood sugar is dropping. But now we're see that line going down. So you have to to have that on you at all times? It's literally attached to me with a tube. What? We have to discuss diabetes at some point, you and I. I would love to. I do a whole TikTok three-part me putting on a new pump. Does it hurt? Series. No. Okay. Well, at least that. Yeah. And I'm quick. You look you look beautiful, darling. I'm sure you accessorize it at every turn. I don't. Uh, you need to. I need to get it bedazzled. I usually just tuck it into my bra and pray that it doesn't fall out and rip out of my body, which happened <laughs> four, three times last week. I got caught on a door handle. Wait, four, three times in a week? I thought you were going to say week. in your lifetime. Oh, no, in a week. You change it every three days, so it's not like it's even that big of a deal. It's like a Band-Aid coming off. Oh, my God. But it's just real annoying because then it's like, oh, my God, I was supposed to have this site on for two more days. And I just dropped it out of my pocket, getting changed into my pajamas, and it hit the floor and ripped out of my body. This is so annoying. Any type 1 diabetics who are on a pump listening are like, been there. Oh, my God. Wait, so it's always on you, always in you. Always, 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 always. It's giving me life-saving juice. Jeez. Well. I'm bionic, you, baby. Sounds I'm like Iron you're- Man. It, you know, it is your little iron arc- deficient man. <laughs> it's like your little arc reactor when it was like all falling out of him and the wires were everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Except See- my arc reactor has a mini USB charger that I plug into at night. So I'm basically, I charge like an iPhone, like to my body every night. Okay. It's so weird. I, I'm so I, tethered, I don't, dude. I don't wish it on anyone. However, it sounds so badass. You know it's, what I mean? It sounds badass until you roll over and like half your nightstand comes with you. But yes. <laughs> like every Avenger has their problems, you know? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Avengers, this will be the last thing we say and then we'll get into spooky stuff. But since it is past January now, I feel like I can announce something very Marvel-esque uh, on the Marvel-esque. podcast. Okay. Marvelous. Uh, for Christmas, I finally got a Captain America shield. Shut the fuck up. I am not kidding. I am I'm not really kidding. mad that you're recording at your mom's house right now because you know I want to see it. Well, it is here, but it is under the tree and wrapped and I'm not supposed to know. So it is with us in spirit. And by the time this comes out, I will have slept with it every night for a good two months or so. You're going to so. convert it into a bed somehow and you're going to curl up <laughs> in it like a cat. So, okay, here's, oh, I don't know if I want to share. It's too late. It's too late. I am one degree away from Captain America and said person in between us has offered to get him to sign it for me. Are you fucking kidding me? I am not. I don't want to give any more because I don't know if the, the person wants to have their name out there or anything, but let's just say we have a mutual and 
It, I can't wait to find out that this mutual is like Scarlett Johansson. I really, I don't want to throw ScarJo like my really good. Actually, friend, like, my mutual to an Avenger is just another Avenger under so. the bus like that. So. But I, it hasn't happened yet. I don't want to like hold my breath on it. It right, may not happen, right. but if it does happen, I assure you, the world will know. Okay, I will be watching as I always am. I'm also one degree away from uh, the love of my life, Elizabeth Olsen. So I technically have two Avengers that I am close with and I... like my mind and nowhere else. Well, then I'm two degrees away from these people. And how lucky are you? you know so what I mean? that's pretty tight. And I don't even need anything from them. I can just tell everyone this. Anyway, that's... I know someone who knows someone who's connected to these people. Well, I've said that before. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with Chris Evans. I don't want anything to do with Elizabeth Olsen. I know myself well enough. It's probably best for everyone if that doesn't happen. But I just want the knowledge that mm -hmm. I am so close. Right. And that's all I need. That's all I want. So um, anyway, because Ron and that's why I drank, that was my reason this week for why I drink because I literally have a Captain America shield and it just may be signed by the first Avenger by the time this comes out. That's so incredible. Why do you drink? I mean, I drink juice because I'm diabetic as hell, but like <laughs> under normal circumstances, I, oh man. Okay. I am drinking for so many reasons this week. In fact, like the, the fact that it's 2 PM and I'm not having a cocktail or a glass of wine right now is kind of an anomaly because this is, as we record this, this is the weekend. Well, no, today is Tuesday. This is the Tuesday before Christmas. I still thought it was Sunday. I don't know what's happening to my mind or my body. Everything is in retrograde somehow. It, I it certainly feel like there's a, a chaotic doom just a clouding over me at all times. Yes, I'm definitely experiencing chaotic doom and like holiday overwhelm. And it's like fine because I'm, you know, 34. So this is just... Like this is just, just a life. It's like a hum that's there all the time. And then like certain times of year, it's like it screams and then it'll level back out. And I'm just in one of those scream scream times right now. So I, I feel the same way um, just because of traveling. Cause I left home, went to South Carolina. I'm now in Virginia. Yep. And then that is its own mess because I'm trying to divide my time up between family and friends, but they're not allowed to overlap because yep. I have someone who's immunocompromised in my family. So yep. I'm actually in the middle of quarantining in the basement um, mm -hmm. before Christmas. And then, so it's a whole mess. And then straight from here, I'm going to Christine's house to rehearse yep. for our show. And then we've got three cities to tour in and then I get to go home. So yep. it's just a, it's just a, Big old headache, but a grateful headache that I get to see family and friends and tour. But like, it's just a lot. It's hard to be away from home that long. And we've all, all of us in podcasting who do tour typically have like had a stretch of time like that. I mean, I know in 2019, we were basically on the road for like three months straight with very few breaks. Everyone's, I feel like everyone's first tour breaks their spirit a little it's, bit it and was, it's just a lot it's just a it's lot it's a lot it's really hard and it's really fun and we love meeting everybody and we're like so grateful for the experience and the shows are so energizing but like please know that when we get back to the hotel that night it is like <laughs> we have nothing people we are empty vessels <laughs> And you're, we're eating it's like so bad true. hotel eggs that were heated up in a microwave. And then we're immediately getting back on a plane the next day. And like, uh, it's, I, it's, I've never it's felt not, so seen. It's not glamorous at all. Like everyone thinks and anyone I talk to about it that are like, oh, that's so cool. You have tour dates coming up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm super excited because we've been, you know, trapped at and home. Also, and also like, a lot of people, I think, equate tour to like like a Hannah Montana experience where you've got like the bus and people yeah. are like helping you out. And it's like, I literally she really set on reasonable <laughs> standards and goals. Like I really fucking, I have four massive suitcases with me. Cause I'm the one that carries all of like the, the set deck, the stage yeah. deck and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and then someone else has like boxes of merch and someone else has, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a lot to not have more than six hands, you know? Oh, and but, if, if God, if, if any of us could afford a bus and like a crew, I know. Shit. 
that would be the move. I think we would just all have one big tour together and we would just all open for each other and just split the difference on the bus. I mean, that makes sense to me. Okay, you know? but can we maybe design our bus sometime over this winter break and send yeah. each other doodles of our combined bus and see what we come up with? Yes, it'll be you as a knockoff Iron Man with your diabetes stuff and it'll be me with but as I a wanna knockoff be on Captain the front. America. I want to be like on the front and like my glasses are the front window of the bus and like my mouth is like the the I don't know, the gate the grate on the it'll front be, of the bus. Every the one of us intake. gets a window and it'll be us like freeze frozen in a way, you know? Yeah. Or like or you know, anyway, we'll shop it. We'll shop it. Yeah, we're but, workshopping this, but it's gonna be great. Anyway, we did not mean to poo-poo on tour of like we're no. not happy. It's just a it's bananas hard. time, folks. And mm-hmm. I totally get why you feel like there's like some sort of like an energy over all of us right now because I so feel it. Well, yeah, and all both of our, you know, both of our shows are about to hit the road and like we don't know what the deal is with Omicron and we're just like exactly. trying to keep it all together and just like make I'm- it happen and be safe. And it's just like a really scary time to be a person and it has been for the last two years and I think everybody's just fucking exhausted. Amen. So that's why I drink. It's fair enough because the the, the human race is at peril once again. We're it always been- we're always <laughs> always So uh, for our stories today, you told me you have a bonkers one. It's nuts. And usually I go first, but since you're the guest, would you like to go first or you want me to go first and and you really wow us at the end? I mean, I feel like it's a lot of pressure to go last, but I also want to do Christine right. Fair enough. I will go first. I want to honor her matriarchal legacy properly. We should. Oh, also, if you want to talk about people who are like like going through it on tour again very happy to be on tour but this woman's about to go on tour with a baby with a baby because so like the everyone, girl's still milking everyone clap a little harder for christine than for me when we're on stage because that woman deserves it she i've never known anyone stronger so absolute badassery and i'm very very blessed to know her she's a gem She's and so actually you are the penultimate episode before Christina's back permanently. So there's only one more guest after Amanda, and it is someone that people on Reddit have been theorizing. Let's just put it that way. Ooh, Ooh okay. I what love that. What could that mean? Mm. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive onto R and that's why we drink while you talk about something creepy. Well, this is uh, I tried to find something in like near you and i got i got to wisconsin that's where we ended up okay well i mean i'm mad about that because wisconsin sucks but (laughs) i also am deeply appreciative that you would consider me in that way i so thank you you're welcome i made the effort so this is the old baraboo inn do you know of baraboo wisconsin I don't, but Me either. in the Midwest, our uh, direct competitor with Starbucks is Caribou Coffee. Oh, well, that's not this. But, you know, <sighs> maybe maybe if you go to the Caribou in Baraboo, that would be a really fun Insta post. Can you imagine the car- the Baraboo Caribou? Wait, How are, there cute car- are, you? are there Caribou in Baraboo? Because that could be a whole situation, I mean, there too. are Caribou in Minneapolis, but we have a lot of Caribou Coffee. So, okay, well, we'll know. stick with the coffee side of it, but that would yeah. be a fun. If anyone is in Baraboo right now, please go to Caribou and, and tag us in a picture. That would be excellent. Oh, I thought you meant the actual animal. I was confusing myself. There's if probably you're Caribou, a Caribou there. with an Instagram account. Can you tag us wherever you are? Actually, that would be oh, best. I'm thriving. I'm totally <laughs> keeping up. Everything is amazing and nothing gets by this gal. So I'll tell you what. So nailing it. This uh, this in has been featured on the Travel Channel a few times, and it is listed in the top 10 of the most haunted locations in the U.S., but according to Food Network, so I don't know what their journalism stats on the paranormal are, um, but Food Network comes back at the end of this, so stay tuned. Awesome. So in this all starts in 1848, when a couple named George and Anna Bender, they come to, uh, not Caribou, they come to Baraboo from Germany, and uh, in 1859, I guess George knew a lot about the German beer over there and decided he was going to open a brewery. Okay. So he opens, uh, he also opens the first saloon in Baraboo called the Bender's Saloon. Love it. 
And in 1864, they end up moving the location to where it is today. So the old Baraboo Inn has been established since 1864, or at least the structure has. Um, Ten years later, George dies, and Anna opens up a boarding house upstairs. So now it's part saloon, I think still part brewery, and then also part boarding house. We contain multitudes. All right. I love it. I love a variety experience. Yep. Of, you know. And it's like a bed and breakfast, but a saloon and boarding house. It's that like, sounds fun. It's more of what you want anyway. A thousand percent. So uh, a couple years later, after George dies, Anna decides that she's going to turn. Oh, I used the exact same information here. Anna decides that she's going to turn the uh, upstairs floor into the boarding house. It's called the Bender Boarding House. Got and it. then when Anna died, uh, about 20 years later, her son took over the boarding house and the saloon. Okay. Family legacy, family biz. Yeah. E- so far, easy, so good. An easy way to keep up with, you know, being a breadwinner and yep. providing. You got your you got your brewskis at night. You got your beds upstairs. You got your wife at home. It's a good life. Beds and brewskis. Let's go. And uh, when he ends up dying, the property gets bought by this guy named August Renaki. And uh, so he buys the property. And what used to be the boarding house now becomes a brothel. Ooh, yes. So he's Upgrade. making it even he's making it even more uh R-rated for the people at home. I love it. In fact, at least two, maybe even three of the spirits that stay here are rumored to be sex workers from upstairs. So okay. the sex workers were probably not having a great time. Probably not. Um, but that is three of the spirits, fun fact, I guess. Um When Prohibition came about, August ended up selling the business because he all of a sudden lost half of his job. Um, Mm -hmm. But he sold it back to the Bender Sons, and they made it into a restaurant, and then it's rumored they also turned it into a speakeasy. Cool. So, speakeasy, brothel, now you just need the triple trifecta, which is a gambling hall, which is exactly what it becomes. Because uh, right across the street from this building is the railway station. And one of the direct lines is to Chicago during Prohibition era. So a lot of mobsters, Mm -hmm. including Al Capone, who likes to come here. Fun. He loved bouncing around all over the place in the Midwest. I feel like he he was just everywhere always. Oh, for sure. So uh, it's also rumored that there is an execution poll downstairs what where does that mean? i think they would tie people <laughs> they don't like to the pole and then torture them and shoot them oh wow like that's... a literal execution pole that's bad um so that is where a lot of the ghosts come from yeah and in the 1930s when the location got sold it became several vari- several versions of cafes bars clubs restaurants and in 1962, it got bought and turned into the old Baraboo Inn. Okay. So now we're in the 1960s. And the Baraboo Inn was opened by John and Rose Dombrowski. Okay. Um, John and Rose both become ghosts later in this <gasps> place. So the original Dang. owners of the inn. Uh, so in 1979, when John dies, guess how he dies? I want you to guess like something kind of out there hmm okay i'm gonna say this is either a toilet related incident (laughs) or a drunken accident type death it's more of the accident okay he he, like uh, fall off a ladder because i did that this year and it's crazy no yo how tall was the how far up were you i mean i was like to my roof but i my roof isn't super high my house is like a small kind of bungalow but like i don't care who you are or what you do but if you fall off a roof of any size i am scared for you it was deeply it was deeply stupid i was putting up bistro lights and i have to like put these anchors in the stucco and then put the light on it and then i was hanging them across the backyard to the garage this is like being a homeowner is fucking in it's it's looney tunes um (laughs) And I like read the directions for the ladder. I I was very, you know, falsely confident. I was like, I know how to do this. You know, I'm a woman. Like, I'm a yeah, I'm a hear W O M A N. Hear me roar! It's one yeah. of those like collapsible, like expanding ladders. So I put it up a little bit. I lock it, or so I think. 
And then I get up there and it collapses while I'm up oh. on it and closes on my foot. And Boom. I like, I was like, oh, I'm falling. So I kind of scrunched forward because we just had our, at this time, we had just had our concrete patio poured. And I'm like, I'm not going to hit my head on concrete. And this like, oh. this is not going to be it. This is yeah. not how I go out doing chores for my home. <laughs> like, absolutely not. God. So I like scrunched forward and then was just, I got to the ground and, but my foot was stuck in this ladder. So I was just sort of hanging upside down with like one shoulder on the ground and God. smart me. The first time I had gotten up on the ladder and I didn't fall was like, just in case I fall, I'm going to have my phone in my pocket. Oh, and then smart. dumb me got down to move the ladder and then like open Instagram and then put my phone down. <laughs> So I didn't have my phone in my pocket. Oh, and so I no. just started screaming for Bill who was inside and he came out and was like, what the fuck is going on? And then his dad was like, well, did you get a picture before you helped her get out of the ladder? And I was like, no, that's the most dad thing I've ever heard. Uh, one yeah. time I was on fire and my dad took a picture before putting me out. One uh, time I was on fire. My whole body too. It was because we're again, you were saying like weird shit happens in the South and to right. us, a bonfire starts at like a hundred feet okay. tall. It's just like the big, it might as well be the beginnings of a forest fire. Sure. You have your own contained forest fire. Let's just put it that way. Cool. And my dad wanted me to take a picture next. His We love taking pictures next to fires to show it proportionally how big yep. the fire is. So I was standing next to it and I was wearing a very flammable jacket. And all of a sudden it started like curling and hardening because <gasps> it was like a windbreaker material. And all oh, of a sudden no. it was rock hard like the plastic had melted. And it started smoking. And then before I knew it, the whole back of my jacket went whoosh like no i was literally like you could have like i looked like burning man or something <laughs> <laughs> so uh my dad was like hang on hang on he was trying to get a picture of course he's a dad so the picture didn't even turn out like it wasn't even worth it oh and my his thumb then, is in the way <laughs> and then he grabs me by like the cuff of my shirt and like rips me onto the ground and just starts like kicking dirt at me i was like what's going on start anyway, rolling that's wow. the closest to danger i've probably been in um well, one, one my, day you'll have your either traveling camper or your tiny home, and then you'll be close to danger all the time. All you'll the have time, because like, I, I was things. raised that a normal sized fire is inappropriate and unnecessary. Yeah. So yeah. you're right. I'll probably find myself in, in danger again. Yeah, don't worry. You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where were we? Oh, how this man died. Yes. So he, Accident. he died because a bowling ball flew into the building from like it just came in from a window and it scared him so much. He had a heart attack. It well, there was just no way I was ever going to guess that. So I don't <laughs> I feel know. bad. I know. I was like, let's just see what comes out of her mouth. What? How? What circ? Did they you live would, near a bowling alley? Who is throwing would, bowling at balls? You, you would think that there would be a story to that, but it was, there it was only on one source and they were like, it was said so blase that everyone should know it, obviously. And uh, yeah, the bowling ball came in. I too would have a heart attack and fall over. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, also, like it had to have been thrown from pretty nearby. If it's that heavy, it probably just got like pushed into the window. Right. That's yeah. I, I like can't... no one can like like who are you fucking Spider-Man? Like you just throw a bowling ball from a far distance into a window and right? hard enough that it shatters the glass. Something's up adding up. It feels like it was a really a newbie shot at trying to kill somebody. Like I it, am suspicious. It feels like a hitman's first day, you know? Mm, mm -hmm. Um, Or just like, oh, or no. I feel like this should be added now, but apparently this building also had a, an early history with the beginnings of circuses. Okay. Again, I, I found it nowhere else on the internet. I, I don't, don't know anything else. I don't like when little like cool nuggets like that get dropped and there's no follow up or explanation. Yeah, it's like I wish the writer knew that like they weren't doing anything special by keeping us in the dark. Like right. you, if anything, would be the coolest for filling us in. Right. And, and you but, blew like, it. Apparently, like a bunch of like circus performers used to hang out there and they like were like, I, maybe this was the meeting place for the first circus. I don't totally understand. But That's I like to really think cool. The, the bowling ball was part of that, but Probably. I have no idea. They were practicing a new like a juggling for their routine act. or something. Yeah. yeah, something crazy. Uh -huh. So uh, anyway, John dies. He has a heart attack because it's so wild that he can't process it. Yep. And uh, 
So that means that him and George have now died on site. And that does not include the sex workers that died here, plus any of the mobsters, enemies or card cheaters, or maybe if there were any cowboys at the time. So lots of death. And the son ends up, the son of John and Rose ends up taking over the pub. But by the 1980s, the building catches on fire and enough of it was damaged that they ended up having to close the business. Wow. So the business uh, stays vacant for 14 years. And then in 2002, it is opened as a restaurant by the new owner. His name is B.C. Farr, which is a wild name to me. But B.C. Farr, fun fact, he was the last person to get out of the building when it was on fire. Okay. And then 14 years later, he ends up owning it and had renovated it. And I guess the building stayed with him personally. All right. So... Before he opened it, this is where the ghosts come in. Uh, Before he opened it as a restaurant, he spent years and a lot of money renovating it so that it was like a brand new building. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty common that spirits of a building hate when it gets remodeled or their version of the home gets altered. And so during their space. Exactly. And so uh, during these renovations is the real first sign of spirits here, Uh, at least that is documented. So when he was renovating the second floor, originally, he I think he renovated that first and he made it into like apartment since it was already a boarding home. Mm -hmm. And his thought was, if I renovate the top floor first into nice apartments, I can rent that out while I'm doing construction on the first floor and still make some money. So um, while he was doing all these renovations, there were like people the construction workers were seeing shadows in the corner of their eye they were seeing objects move their tools would be missing the next day Ooh. they would turn off all the lights and lock all the doors and then they'd come back in the morning all the doors were open and the lights were on but really just average creepy stuff mm-hmm. and then after that people like once it was open to the public people started seeing stuff too and that's when bc far decided that he was going to publicly announced that the place was haunted because I think he kept it to himself for a while. And he was like, I spent so much money. I don't want to like risk my business being damaged because of the ghosts. But then when enough people around him were also saying weird shit was going on, he was like, whatever. I I don't want to hide it anymore. Yeah. So, um, fun fact, this is where food network comes in again in 2018, BC far retired and he sold the building to food network. And so they, as far as I know, currently own the building. Okay. Weird, right? And I don't know why. I don't know what they're doing there. Is it just office space? Is it a studio in the middle of Wisconsin? I don't know. Any house can be a home. That's it. So anyway, in case you were wondering (laughs) how... That's the Food Network's motto anyway. (laughs) I think. Maybe. If you're you're wondering why Food Network is involved, I'm not the person that's going to be able to explain it to you. So. Nope. So while it was apartments, that was when, again, people started uh, noticing ghosts around the area. Um, And when one of the tenants actually had to break their lease early because the ghosts were freaking them out so much. Mm -hmm. Um, One tenant ended up leaving because they heard scratching on doors. And at night when he was sleeping, he'd wake up to a woman calling his name. Okay, well, that's rude. And the scratching. Uh Uh-uh. I don't like the scratching, but I particularly hate that it's intelligent enough to know the person's name. That's and then once very your attention, unsettling. and then once your attention. But I also I feel like maybe it's because of all the movies uh, with ghosts. I feel like at least that would give me some idea of w- that this thing is trying to communicate with me. Which, like, yes, that's, that's scary, true. but it's like you can talk, so I can respond the scratching is so like ambiguous and it's harder to tell is this sinister like what are you trying to achieve see i feel like i can confirm immediately it's sinister (laughs) because now i mean i don't know but i feel like there's no nice person i know currently scratching on my doors that's fair and so maybe the etiquette changes in the afterlife but i feel like the scratching is very much like i want you to be freaked out you know yeah you're probably right okay you're especially because i feel like there's a lot of spirits out there where like i feel like if it gives you creepy vibes it wants you to be creeped out like they're powerful enough to not freak you out if they don't want you to be scared right. so i feel like if they if you feel totally. freaked out in a room it's on purpose and so i feel like the scratching yeah. is like we know this is gonna bother you you know mm-hmm. maybe not maybe it's like it's some sort of residual haunt where like listen i hate all of it it's all a, it's all bad 
if I could, if I could opt out of the experience, whether it's positive or negative, I'm going to do that. Yep. One of the tenants actually tried taunting the ghosts one time. I think Great his idea. name was Zach Bagans. That's brilliant. And so smart. He said, come on, Casper, come and get me. And then something started knocking on his door. So why are people so dumb? I don't know. Like, I don't know. On what it, planet is that what your go to? I know what I'm going to do. It's very, I mean, it, I really, it's such a Zach Bagans thing to do of like, oh, I'm going to taunt these. Like, if you, I don't know, it's just a personal opinion, but if you want an experience with a ghost, maybe just ask nicely and then yep. also ask them to leave nicely afterwards. Yep. Uh, I feel it like doesn't manners, have to be like this. Manners are universal. It doesn't matter what plane you're living on. So, I love that. Yeah. I want that on like a tea towel. <laughs> yeah. Manners in every realm. Yep. So... <laughs> Uh, other tenants would wake up at night to the sounds of live music and glasses clinking and people laughing in the room when they were alone, which I have experienced that before. And it's so horrific. It's I mean, it's just chilling because you have the knowledge that you're alone and yet you hear what sounds like a full rager of a party going on. I mean, that would like, also deeply trigger my FOMO and be like, this is a party <laughs> that I can't even fucking go to. That's just rude. Manners on every realm, but Manners you're still on not it, like, invited. Invite you know? me. <laughs> you're still not invited. I'm fun. I uh, like, I've heard it and it really, I can't explain it, but it sounds like, on the other side of the door, the party is booming. And when right. you open the door, it's going to be it's like nothing. And there's nothing. It's so creepy. So uh, people have experienced that just because the, I guess the place has such a history of being a bar and a social area. Mm -hmm. Another tenant at, watched a light fixture fall out of the ceiling and onto their bed. Nope. And an, another tenant had a, uh, a constant issue with water dripping into her cabinet from nowhere. Nope. No, thank that's, you. That's a firm Because now you're also me. giving us repairs that we have to make. We gotta fix <laughs> right. that water damage. Now that's... it's expensive. Yeah. Now you're yeah. fucking with my money, and I don't like that. It, as, as for the staff, the dishes and cups would get thrown around. Uh, the owner saw a broom float across the room one time. The doors open and close. And then the basement walk-in door mm -mm. will close you in and turn the lights off if the spirits don't like you. Like, we'll just... Be like, you're done. You can stay here now. Jesus. Meanwhile, if it likes you, the spirit will make sure that the door stays open and the lights stay on for you when you're in the walk-in closet or the walk-in <sighs> pantry or whatever it is. Great. Okay. So dice roll. <laughs> right. You just got to like, you got to, uh, I guess. I'm I already know. anxious enough as a Libra about who out there that I don't even know likes or doesn't like me i've gotten over a lot of that thank god it's, but it's very I don't much need, like <laughs> i don't need it from ghosts too you have to give a good first impression or else you're really fucked especially <sighs> in uh psychology there's something called the halo effect where if you fuck up one time it takes six uninterrupted consistent good impressions to make up for the bad first impression and then vice versa if you have one really good first impression it takes six times for six bad impressions in a row after that to uh, make people change their mind about your good first impression. I really have to please people I've pissed off six times in a row. times in a row. <laughs> yeah, if you mess up one time, then you have to start all over again. I know. Ooh, that explains a lot. Yeah, you got to be consistently good, and that is just not where I fly. That it's not no. my. That's not my safe space. I, I guess need a lot of people just aren't gonna like me then. I, I need to curse and be sarcastic and cry a lot, and people don't usually vibe with that. So, wow. <laughs> so, uh, also in the brothel area, which I guess is still the upstairs, but the tenants were having their own experiences, and then the owner BC Far. Once the tenants moved out and he was using the second floor again, uh, he started hearing a baby crying in there. And he oh, also went, Oh, no. Uh -uh. I really can't tolerate a baby nope. crying. No. I, not on an airplane and not as a ghost. <laughs> Honestly, Just... like, as a, as a ghost, like, as a baby, it's like, okay, throw a pacifier and it's not. Right. And I can but see like, that baby. A, I can see where that crying is coming from. And I can know that it it will pass. But when it's a ghost, it's crying for eternity, which Stop. means Stop. I have to hear it for eternity. Nope. You know what I mean? Nope. 
And it doesn't have to be a baby. Anyone, anyone who's like really in their feels as a ghost. I'm like, oh, wow, this is like exhausting for you and me, you know? So they of BC far also one time saw a basketball sized orb morph into the shape of a dark black bear and then fade into the wall. Holy shit. There are so many experiences documented in this place. I know. It's also, I love how creative some of them are. Like, yeah. An orb ter- was already massive and then became a bear and then left the room. Yeah, that's just cool. Like you could have you could have not done that. That could have your choice of the night ghost could have been to just leave people alone. But you really went for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, many people have also witnessed actual full bodied apparitions in the building, including an older woman, an older man, a cat and love a, and a cowboy named Jed. Cool. Uh, in particular, many people see the spirit of a woman in period clothing that the staff have called Mary, because I guess one time one of the sex workers who died there was named Mary. So I guess they're just assuming she's the same person. Okay. Um, many people claim to see Mary going about her day to day. They also see her dancing in the bar a lot, like just ripping it up. She's Uh, having a nice time. In particular, if you want your best chance at summoning Mary on the dance floor as your partner, uh, you can play the song The House is Rockin' by Stevie Ray Vaughan, and she eats it up. She also, I hear, loves the song Every Morning by Sugar Ray. <laughs> so she's a big fan of I Stevie sure Ray Vaughan and Sugar Ray. I, look, Heads up. Play either, and I will certainly be on the dance floor. Yeah, let's go. I don't know how they figured that out, like what her interest was as a, like in ghost music, but... I love that she's got a song and I love yeah. that it's not from a time where she no. was living there. Like she like hung around and said, you know what? In about 40 years, I'm really going to have my, my moment. on This the is going to be a banger and I'm going to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. I like I to think that. now that there's like a ghost from like the 1600s who like loves Olivia Rodrigo. Who's like, <laughs> she's like, that's my girl. I've been waiting for centuries for her. You know, Billy fucking Eilish. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> At the drop of bad guy, like that's when like the Victorian ghosts get crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well that's a TikTok that we need to make. It's waiting. It's someone out there who's better and more creative than Go I am. Do we'll it. it out. Uh, there are also apparitions of a the spirits of a boy and his dog that apparently the children, living children that patrons bring in, uh, have played with before they'll like say that they've hung out with a little boy in his oh no 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 when it's confirmed like that we have a ghost like that in fredericksburg where uh everyone knows that if you see it's a restaurant that's it's now called billikens if you're from fredericksburg but back in the day it was not billikens and no matter what people have always seen a little boy playing with his trucks in the corner and they just know to like not talk to him and they have and also his sister they see her like leaning out the window and looking out into the street have you Uh, seen this i've seen the little boy i have not seen the little girl oh you've seen the little boy yeah and so that building actually by the way i'm sure is bananas haunted because never has a business been able to run longer than a few years there and every single business before they move in hires a priest to bless the house because they like are like there's something kooky going on up there oh absolutely not Mm -hmm. i know no 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 it's nope. it's pretty wild. So there's a little boy here. He's got a dog, which would actually make me more inclined to approach him, uh, even if I was told not to. And then there's the spirits of uh, cowboys in the tavern, mobsters in the back bars, and many people have heard a lot of voices partying in there as well. And when upstairs in the old brothel area, people have heard the sounds of sex in empty rooms. Nice. And they've even seen, uh, I guess investigators have gotten SLS footage of it, which if you, I don't know if you've ever watched any of the ghost adventures, but SLS is structured light sensor. And it's this machine that it's like a big camera, but it lets you see ghosts on the screen in the forms of stick figures. Oh, okay. And so basically they have gotten footage of stick figure porn. Um, well, I'm going to need, I'm going to need to review that footage. <laughs> immediately i would like a link directly sent to my inbox please 
It would be in the group my chat. DMs. Yep. <laughs> if you're a stick man and know where we can find some of your porn, yep. please send it our way. We need to know if you're a ghost or not. Yep. Weirdly, this building, like I said, has some early history with contributing to the beginning of circuses in town. And one mm. of the spirits here oddly looks like a circus performer. Um, BC Farr, the owner, said this is this is a quote from him. There was a guy standing there, a full body apparition with a blank death stare face. He was wearing what looked like a circus shirt and he it had blousey sleeves and orange stripes with ruffles. And then he slowly disappeared. All right, so we've got clowns, we've Stick got figures. porn, we've got <laughs> dogs. We've, it's a party. We've got Sugar Ray, Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> we've got a, a someone who really likes more modern music. This place has everything. It's a, uh, a real mixed bag, if you wow. will. And people also hear a ghost that likes to whistle through the halls. They often smell pu- perfume near the woman's restroom. People have also smelled cigars. They've smelled flowers. They've also had rocks thrown at them. I don't like that. That's Don't choose violence. I feel like finally there's something physical happening to people. Like mm-hmm. finally in the story. Not like finally I wanted someone to get hurt. But <laughs> yes, I, it's finally. It, it's shocking how many ways a ghost can present itself without directly interacting with a person. Right. So I was kind of waiting for violence to show up and apparently rocks have been thrown at people. I think it was more investigators than customers. Mm-hmm. Um, so at least they know what audience to pick on their, what level of activity they want to be a part of. Sure. Uh, people have also watched bar stools spin on their own and tip over onto their legs. Ooh, ooh. And some delivery drivers have claimed that when they walk in to drop off bulk items, they have seen apparitions glaring at them from the doorways. Even, Welcoming. I know, right? Even uh, BC Farr's at the time fiance, quote, saw a picture fly off the wall and a 200 pound griddle move on its own. Damn. Which makes me think like if a ghost is strong enough to lift 200 pounds, I'm in trouble. Like I like... That ghost is can just fling me oh, around. You're going out the window, honey. You're done. I'm grateful it hasn't happened yet, but I kind of wonder why, too. Because if sure. I had superhuman strength in the afterlife, I would be dead weighting everyone, you know, yeah. or like dead lifting everyone. Yep. I'm just Without saying, fail. If I just, die before you and you're floating around the middle of the night, just know I I'm am. testing my strength. That's I all. I love that. Thank you. And, and I, I want you to. That. As someone who needs words of affirmation, can you compliment my strength when it happens to you? Yes. Like, you're so brawny. You're and I'll be so like, strong. I bet whatever ghost this is, they're super handsome and strong and smart, <laughs> and they know everything about Spider-Man. Stop it. Also, I like <laughs> that makes me come up to a point of, like, maybe all ghosts, maybe some of them need words of affirmation. And if they maybe. throw a griddle around, maybe just be like, wow, that was really impressive. Right? Like, maybe we, maybe we, like, some gentle parenting. But then is it encouraged? Yes. It's like, like I where can do see we that tell that wanna, line? I can see you want to lift something really heavy right now. Maybe we move over to this item. Maybe yep. that's good for lifting, you know? Maybe we find a different way to express our feelings. How can yeah. I help support you? You get it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so and <laughs> people have also been touched at the bar. They've had their hair pulled and another I mean, investigator. same, but not by a ghost. <laughs> okay, maybe this experience is actually better. I don't know. Maybe. I another, I'd prefer the ghost for sure. Another investigator felt like he was being crushed in the basement. Oh, so I guess he was one of the ones that did not make a good first impression. I've experienced whistling for sure. Like really close to me to mm. the point where you could like feel breath from the whistle on your neck. And then I was in the basement getting wine out of the wine cellar of the old restaurant I used to work at, which was in a like long since retired firehouse, one of like the first firehouses in Minneapolis. So it's an old fucking building. And I like <sighs> whipped around thinking that somebody was fucking with me from the staff. Nobody else in the basement, not a soul down there. Forget it. Yep. No, not. I, that. you know, I have thought before about like the experiences I've been in where I didn't realize it until afterwards. And mm-hmm. then I was like, Oh, that was fucking creepy. But then there are other times where like, it's so direct. Like there, you know, something weird just happened to you and there's nothing yep. you can do about it. Yep. I've told this story before, but th- with my ex, there was a little girl ghost that would haunt her house. And I guess, um, one time me and my ex were doing some kissing. Yep. And right next to us, you could hear a little girl giggle and then go. 
Like, no, it felt so violating in so many ways. And like, you could, you could tell the feeling was just like a, like a little sister taunting, like, Oh, I saw you kissing, but it was so creepy that like, clearly I'm being watched when that stuff happens. Oh, I hate that so much. I hate that so much. And then we were like, that was weird. We both looked at each other freaked out. Like, did you just see, did you just hear that? Did you just hear that? And then we kind of like laughed it off. And 10 minutes later, we tried to like get back into things. And the same thing happened. Mood is over. The moment has passed. You're done, Zo. All of a sudden, you like, you heard again, ha ha ha. (gasps) And then little footsteps run away. Get out of here, you little ghost perv. Get (laughs) away. You're a freak. And like, honestly, I respect that. And your yep. journey but it's t- it's time to leave the room you know but also when like yes i respect a, a freaky little ghost absolutely <laughs> but like knowing that the freaky little ghost is also like a child watching you but also here's the creepy part have your sexy of, times here's the creepier part is that a lot of times in stories the little children are actually demons in disguise so you oh, feel great. safer around them so great thank I you i don't know Thanks. I'm just, just saying, if you ever hear a little girl ghost oh, okay. cat calling you, I yeah. don't know. Probably like, a demon. <laughs> it might be a demon. Might be a cool. little girl cat calling you. I'm not sure, but either way, I don't like it. Great. So. I really appreciate that information that I definitely needed. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much. Yep. Uh, so also the, uh, the basement, because that guy felt like he was getting crushed in there. This basement apparently is pretty wild. I mean, this is also where people are like getting the door closed on them if they don't like them. But apparently there is a, quote, suffocating gloom and people dread going down there. And the owner has even had a hard time finding staff that's willing to go in the basement to do their own job. Um, And there's a, quote, overwhelming darkness. And one source suggests that the darkness might actually be that mob hitman who was in charge of the execution poll. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that would make sense, like, canonically, right. for what's going on down there. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. And In just a- the energy left behind by people being, like, knowingly taken into a basement to their death. There's going to be a lot of oh, really God. dark energy just from, like, those folks. Even if they're not necessarily actively haunting that area. I hadn't even thought of that. It's no, going to so, be there. That's so dark and spooky. Yeah. Oh, God. And maybe that thing, if it doesn't like you, is also trapping you in that behind the door because it's like you're next. I don't know. Super creepy. Several investigators uh, have been to this building and they've also hosted a lot of ghost events there. Um, And one source says that there have been many mediums who've come in and tried to get a reading on the building. And one has even said that up to 30 spirits live here. Wow. One of the investigating groups, Paranormal MD... Uh, One of their members, Mary Marshall, says, quote, I consider my paranormal experiences at the old Baraboo Inn some of the most profound and exceptional ever. And I guess Mary's been an investigator for 18 years. Okay, so she's seen some shit. She's seen some shit. Yeah. She even says, this property is definitely in my top two favorite haunted locations to visit. And then didn't tell us what the other one was. Okay, that's rude. I wonder if she has like like a book out, though. She's like, you have to read to find out. It feels a little like a pick me girl of like, oh, like, I'm going to bait you into asking me. So like, I Mm -hmm. have like, anyway, I'm not calling. I'm not trying to insult her. But also, like, why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you tell (laughs) us the first? I obviously you didn't say that without thinking about people wanting to ask the question next. Yeah. it was what rude. gives like yep. also you didn't even say top three like that would have made sense but top two you're asking for people to be curious you know mm-hmm. anyway that is the story of the old baraboo inn in wow. baraboo wisconsin well when's the next time you're in wisconsin like are you going through there on tour i think so i'm unsure i don't i remember. also understand that answering that question is like impossible you know I what our it. first show is homie oh i do and i am ready I'm actually a nervous wreck because we still have to practice our script a lot um, and rehearse. We've got two days of, of rehearsal that we're doing. See, so, you guys actually rehearse. We don't. Well, ours we just is, write our cases and we fucking do it. But and we hope did, it goes okay. But that was so when we were saying earlier that like the tour can like break your spirit. It right. really 
it took a toll on us to have to do new notes. I don't even know mm. how you still do that. I have no idea how you still do it. It's a lot to do individual stories for we every do, place. We get help. We get help. But okay, yeah, I mean, it's, it's work. Whew. A scripted show, I got to tell you, the way to go. Mm -hmm. The way it's and it's such a good show. So I don't even care. I feel like a lot of people kind of like get bristly about like, oh, well, it's a scripted show. It's nothing mm -hmm. like the actual podcast. I promise you, if you come to the show, you're going to have a fucking good time. It's just damn right. You just got to commit. But it's I got to give you a round of applause just for being able to do individual shows on top of your podcast shows, on top of all your bonus content you guys put out. It's I don't know how you do it. Oh, stop. I'm very impressed. Thank you. All right. Tell me a spooky story. You know how like, or are you noticing how teenage heartthrobs of in the ballpark of our generation are like scrambling to play Ted Bundy? There's another Ted Bundy movie <laughs> out on Hulu. Wait, uh, what? Ted Bundy is played by Chad Michael Murray. <gasps> What? He doesn't it, even look anything like him. No. And, you know, if you listen to Wine and Crime, and if you don't, I encourage you to do so, because that's my job to encourage you to do so. Um, we've talked about how, like, kind of absurd, but also pretty good, but still absurd. The, um, who's the high school musical hunk? Who is this guy? Zach. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Zach Efron's Ted Bundy was. He did a I, pretty decent, pretty decent Bundy. I got a... Uh, Fun fact, I worked on that movie. Second of all, I, just, I love saying it because everyone of in our generation and who is a fan of true crime apparently went to go see that movie yeah. immediately. Yep. So I like being a part of something culturally. But um, no, it's, it's also so on the nose that like people of our generation love Zac Efron. People yep. of our generation really found a, a niche in true crime. Yep. And so of course... Zach Efron would be like, I know where the fucking money's at, you know? A thousand percent. And yeah, that's just smart business. Chad Michael Murray was like, I want a piece of that pie. And it is bad. <gasps> it's not good. Why? It's I. Okay. I personally hated it. I hated it. Because it wasn't accurate I, or. It, no, it was, it was fine. I hated the pacing. I oh. hated the acting. I oh. hated the score. Oh. I just, it was like, it was like camp the, without being self-actualized actualized enough to like become camp. Because so much right. about camp is that you're not taking yourself too seriously. Like ev like everyone knows it's camp. Even the actors know it's camp. Yeah. I, it, yeah. This was, it, I don't know. I, I So I want, I want people to come for me. Like, I, please defend this movie. Because <laughs> I'll just... I'll, I'll disagree with you at every turn, but if you also agree with me, I like that even more because I like when people think I'm right. That's uh, so, that's so weird. I didn't even know that there was another movie. I actually it like so, just came out. I just watched a different one when I was with Allison's family, mm -hmm. and it was it starred Elijah Wood. Oh, it was a very weird. It was also like I love Elijah Wood. This is a Ted Bundy. He was the detective, but it was like. I kind of oh. didn't like it either because the it it was after all of the murders. Not that I want to see any murders, but there the whole thing was very slow because the entire um, the entire movie was him, uh, Ted Bundy and Elijah Wood as the detective in a room where oh, they doing were the like, interviews. It's like a mind hunter thing. Yeah, and it, but it was the whole thing. Like I swear, ninety percent of that movie was filmed in the same room, and it yeah. was just the two of them talking. And I was like. Nothing's happening here, folks, you know? And this Chad Michael Murray one is almost exactly the opposite. Like, it's it it a little bit includes the investigation, but it's really just him going around being gross and murdering people. And, like, Ugh. it's so poorly acted and so weirdly cast that you don't even... I feel like it does such a disservice to all of the victims of Ted Bundy because you like, I was going to say, was it respectful? Even, barely. Like you don't care about these women. They are like vapid teenagers who are, who like have no substance whatsoever. I just was mm. like, what is this? Like, it's just, it, th it felt like a high school film project where like somebody got their hands on a really good camera and they pulled off that part of it. And oh, then wow. the rest of it was just fucking trash. 
crazy. And also so, Chad Michael Murray. I mean, he was such a great, well, it's a 13 year old. I mean, he was Gilmore such a great girls, actor. Come on. I was like, I'm pretty sure this Cinderella guy, like, story. I, yeah. I was like, you would think he would at least carry the show with his acting, but maybe he was like, I'm Chad Michael Murray. Like, you fucking it was act. kind of mad. The, uh, I'm just going to say two words and then I'm not going to talk about it again. And then you need to text me when these two words <laughs> resonate after you've watched it. Okay. Mannequin scene. <laughs> what? Okay. I, I, I'm not going to say anything else. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. And then you're going to go watch it because you have another, you know, 24 hours of quarantine to check for symptoms. What the I've fuck got, else are you going to do? I've got literally until Christmas, I'm not allowed to leave the basement. My mom threw a couple apples down here and that's like as far you're as I go. You're getting a metal tray through a slat in the door. Do you have a My, bathroom? Do you have water? I, I have a bathroom. I'm actually, you know, what's so funny is this, I, I, it's very, uh, very cute. I know. I, I hope everyone's okay with a little rambling today, but uh, this episode is uh being recorded in what used to be the kids club Aww. which is you can't see it obviously because there's this marvel thing behind me but um i'm in what is now a bedroom because when my mom remarried he had several children and we Cute. needed to just find find places for them which means i had to sacrifice my kids club but uh when i was like nine me and my friends who i'm still friends with we all made like an official club down here this was the part of the garage that was like or part of the basement that was like just studs and cement yeah. floor and just completely unfinished and we like we were really serious about it like it was a big fucking deal the kids club and like you had to take Whoa. a really hard test to <laughs> even get into it's like the, the kids american club. citizenship test it's <laughs> no i actually I actually found a copy of the uh, the test, and it is literally, like, we made it so that you could not get into the kids' Will club. Will you please administer the kids' club test on me <laughs> at some point while you're bored this week waiting to get out of quarantine? Happily, yeah. A thousand percent. I'm not you fucking won't get kidding. In. I, you won't get uh, in, because I... Oh, okay. <laughs> adult me can't get in. Okay. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I don't even... I don't think even I knew the answers. I was just I writing mean, words down. I did need help to get out of your escape room, so none of this surprises me. <laughs> Not oh, it. also, I want to give you a shout out because you were the first person to actually try my escape room and you were so kind to me about it. I loved it. Thank you. I want another one. Thank you. I, I'm supposed to be making one right now. I, I'm i literally, I was supposed to do one actually a couple months ago and that one got entirely skipped because mental illness. Oh, hi. Um, there, have it, there hasn't been a last four months. Yesterday <laughs> it was July and now it's Christmas. I don't know what it was. I, I could not get myself out of bed for like months unless it was like, like, a, like I had to work or something. Yep. I don't know what my deal is. And so anyway, now I'm back at it and I'm doing a, a holiday one. So you will get another one. But yes! anyway, I appreciate you liking the last one. Okay. Tell me your story. Okay. So we've established that this episode is being released like probably end of January or, or February in February. So this Honestly, is kind of perfect. I don't know. I don't know anymore, but somewhere in January. We don't know-ish, but it's fine, because regardless, we're coming up on the anniversary of this murder on February 21st. So if it comes out around oh, that time, okay. that will feel like extra fitting. Okay. You're going to go nuts over this, and you also may have heard it. So I get what? it. What? But, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if you've heard of this. I you wanted... know, a, a lot of people think I know anything about true crime, but the art of having a true crime co-host is she teaches me everything other than that i'm not a part of the world so well, i don't know i appreciate you saying that because same I, like i wanted to cover something that combined true crime and paranormal and since like app algorithms are literal mind reading machines talk talk <laughs> actually recommended this case to me probably okay. from like reading my texts and emails between you and me and my anxiety is now spiraling but everything is fine we're constantly watched there's no such thing as free will so here we go Perfect. um <laughs> I had not heard of this case either, and it's it's possible that you've heard of it because it does have a paranormal aspect, but like I am also the most out of touch true crime podcaster on the planet, so we share that Perfect. very much. But we're going to go on the way, way back machine, not quite as far back as you went. We're going to 1977. Ooh. Star Wars had just opened in theaters. <gasps> Early Ooh. Apple computers were hitting the market. The Apple II computer had just launched. Okay. Elvis Presley died. Roman Polanski was arrested. Wow. New York City blackouts, you know, like are going on for a day or two. You know, wow. it's, a, it's a wild time. And 47 year old respiratory therapist Teresita Bassa is murdered in Chicago. 
Uh oh. So she had worked at Edgewater Hospital, which no longer exists, but it was a thing at the time. Okay. And after finishing a shift, she made her way home to her apartment on Pine Grove Avenue in Chicago. She had been living in Chicago for many years after her making her way to the United States from the Philippines as a pretty young girl. I th- not pretty young as in like she was beautiful and young, but like she was fairly young when she came to the United States. I say, yeah. And also ugly as sin. Hideous. I, guess. No, I just hate being like, <laughs> she was so beautiful and full I know, of I life. Know. And I hate it. <laughs> Um, she had made a lot of friends. She lived a fairly quiet, unassuming life. She was super well liked. Everyone just remembered her as like just this quiet kind of gentle person. She came from a well off family in the Philippines. She had traveled the world. She studied music and she had devoted her studies to respiratory therapy in the States so that she would be able to like have a good stable job. Um, and, th- and that led her to her job in Chicago. But while she was working at the hospital, she was also pursuing her doctorate in music and teaching piano lessons from her apartment. Wow. So she's like really bored on the weekend. She's got nothing going on. No, she is not busy. She mm-hmm. also couldn't get out of her bed for three months during a global <laughs> pandemic. She has right. no ambition She was whatsoever. saving the world from the pandemic, it sounds like. Probably. She just yeah. sounds like a super ambitious and like generally lovely person. Good for her. Okay. So, but, you know, good for her and also rest in peace. Right. So late at night on February 21st, 1977, neighbors down the hall called the fire department to report smoke coming from Teresita's apartment. Mm. Firefighters had arrived and the janitor of the building had like evacuated all the, all the residents. So everybody else was safe. And they found the source of the smoke coming from Teresita's apartment and broke in to investigate. The fire was quickly extinguished, but as the smoke cleared, they found a gruesome scene. Oh, God. Okay. It's always a gruesome scene, y'all. It's, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's, I mean, that's true crime for you. So Teresita's body was found nude with a knife still sticking out of her chest, (gasps) covered by a mattress that had been lit on fire, like in the middle of her living room. Oh, my God. Yeah. So she was pretty badly burned, though it it's pretty it was pretty clear that the burns were postmortem. So she had died before the fire was lit. So at least I mean, I, there's no like fun way to die. But, but at I least it wasn't think... like multiple ways at once. Yeah, it was, I, don't I don't know what the right I way to say pick, that is. I don't think I'd pick burning to death as like top of my list. That seems really painful. I mean, I if the options were get stabbed in the chest or get stabbed in the chest and fire. I'm going to pick just stabbed in the chest. Yeah. Just I'm going to go with just one. Yeah. I hear you. I don't want either option, but I guess like at least she suffered in less ways than Mm -hmm. possible. Exactly. Um, It was fairly clear. I mean, especially since she was found naked, that she had been sexually assaulted. assaulted. Yep. Yep. Um, she was killed and the killer had tried to destroy evidence with arson. So that's when they went in uh-huh. to her room, got the mattress, dragged it out, put it on top of her and lit it on fire, thinking that they could get rid of any evidence. I see. Got it. Got it. So although there were no witnesses who saw anyone enter or exit the apartment that night, a colleague and friend of Teresita's remembered a brief phone call with her earlier in the day. So this friend had called to invite her to like hang out, but Teresita said she was expecting a visitor, like a gentleman visitor. And it wasn't clear if this was a romantic thing or if she was just expecting someone who happened to be a a man to, yeah, to, to stop over. Right. Could have been, could have been a buddy. Yep. And this is also the 70s, so we just don't have, like, security cameras in the hallways. We don't Mm. have forensic evidence technology like we know today. So without a name for the visitor who came by or any witnesses to give a description or even confirm that a visitor had come over at all, the case offered very few leads. And there was, like, one tiny bit of evidence found at the scene that was just a scribbled down note in Teresita's handwriting that read, quote, get theater tickets for A period S period. So like initials. Oh, okay. So like, could AS have been the gentleman caller? Like, who sure. is, who's AS? I don't know. Right. Got it. Makes sense. So police spent weeks interviewing friends and coworkers, looking for a possible love interest, seeing if anyone had a grudge or an issue with Teresita, and nothing came up to indicate that she had a single enemy or was anything but a well-liked, 
gentle, loving person. So they're just like, we don't have any fucking clue who would do this, which also Jeez. makes them think maybe it's just like completely random, but there right. wasn't really anything at the scene that investigators could find that showed that it was like a robbery gone wrong or like there wasn't like a bunch of stuff missing. It just, it, it didn't, it didn't seem to make sense. They couldn't narrow down a motive and now they can't even narrow down any semblance of a suspect. Right. Yeah, sure. So months go by and the case goes cold. At this point, about six months had gone by when the lead investigator in this case, uh, Detective Joe Spatula, who I will be referring to as Detective Spatula from here on out, <laughs> which I don't even think I name him ever again. So it's just Joe Spatula. <laughs> Detective Joe Spatula <laughs> came into work to a strange note on his desk. The note told him to give another precinct in another jurisdiction outside of Chicago, like still in Illinois, but not Chicago PD. Okay. To give them a call about the Terracy DeBasa case. So he makes the call and they give him the name of a man to contact, a guy named Dr. Jose Chua in Skokie, Illinois, which is just north of Chicago. It's like a northern suburb of Chicago. So what Dr. Chua told them was bizarre to say the least. Dr. Okay. Chua's... Yeah, this is where we're going to get to the part that you're going to like. Oh, okay. Dr. Chua's wife, Remy, was also a respiratory therapist and colleague of Teresita. They had become pretty close friends because they were also from the Philippines. So this, both of these people and these families are immigrants from the Philippines. Got it. Remy had been devastated by Teresita's death and was also dismayed that there were no leads in this case. One night, Remy woke up from a nightmare in an agitated state. She'd had a dream that she was talking to Teresita and that Teresita was begging her to go to the police and tell them what happened to her. The dreams became more frequent and night after night, Remy would wake up upset, but not really remembering the details that Teresita had told her. So it's like, what? think of how agonizing that is. Like your friend is visiting you in a dream and being like, please tell them what, please tell them what happened to me. And then you can't remember the parts of the dream where the friend is telling them what happened to you. That's first of all, so frustrating. And second of all, if you're a ghost with that kind of power, like you are like puttering down at the worst time. Like you need to be like, really make those certain scenes stick. So that person can help you. Oh, and it's just like, what a mean trick or like, what a, but she's also, I'm trying to give her a little, I'm trying to give the ghost of Teresita a little grace. She's new to being a ghost. Okay, that's fair. She's, Maybe she she's hasn't just figured it out yet. Hasn't figured it out yet. And she ramps it up. So oh, okay. she's, she, she, she is, delivers. Eventually. She delivers. And like, she's probably also frustrated that this case is remaining cold. And she's like, I'm fucking telling my friend what happened. And then my friend is not doing anything about it. I clearly need to up the ante here. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't have uh, jumped to conclusion so soon. With Teresita. I didn't give you enough information not to. So that you know, that's what we got to do. We got to jump. It also it it's kind of a good warning for the people in my life to let you know if you're listening that if something were to happen to me and I come to you in a dream and the first time around I, like it's not doing it, like mm -hmm. I'll be back. I'll figure yep. it out. You know, I'm, I am not only like I have the tenacity and yeah. I'm irritating enough. And I also have to eternity get... to figure yeah. it out. Like you got you, time. Uh, we're going to figure it out together. So mm -hmm. the first time is not the last time. Yep. Yeah. So then Remy began talking in her sleep. Shut the fuck up. And during one of these episodes, her husband, Dr. Chua, remembers Remy speaking to him in a voice that he says does not belong to his wife. Forget it. No. Yep. Yep. What what kind of voice was it? Like Teresita's voice. Like it was <gasps> not Remy. It was Teresita. Oh no. Channeling herself through her friend. Wow. She really does ramp it up quick. Immediately. She was, she was like, I'll figure it out. I Fuck. will fucking wake up your husband and just talk to his ass because you are remembering <laughs> shit when, when you wake up. This is clearly not working. <laughs> So she wakes him up and says she is Teresi Tabasa and that a man named Alan Showery, A.S., a -S. had killed her. She mm. said Alan was an orderly at Edgewater Hospital. And then Remy would wake up from these like sleep talking episodes with no memory of her dream or the conversation with Dr. Chua. 
Really? So even after the husband would be like, you don't remember talking about Alan? He, she'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like she, Crazy. Wouldn't, she wouldn't remember. And then Bananas. Dr. Chua, dude is a literal doctor, like man of science, is like, well, I'm not immediately going to go to the police because my wife, who is grieving the loss of her friend, is having these like episodes in the middle of the night like it i get where he's coming from i get it too but i want him to be like fuck this this is crazy like, oh teresita fucking takes care of business i love this I, I like to think sorry this fucking thing is on my it's last my nerve. favorite thing and i can <laughs> definitely take you seriously 100 <laughs> percent. uh i feel like it's like a christine and blaze situation because blaze would obviously want to like be the skeptic in this yeah. situation but christine would be like Blaze, if I need to turn into a literal fucking demon for you to take this seriously, that's what's going to have to happen. And I'm doing it. Yeah, I feel like that's literally what's happening right now. Um, you know? Pretty much, Teresita is like, fuck this shit. If they won't solve it, I'll solve it. And I will channel That is the my most Christine thing I've ever heard, by the way. Of like, I, I, I got it. <laughs> I also feel like Christine would have no issue irritating one of our partners into action over the course of like a month and a half. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Like if, if you were murdered and, and Christine knew... Or like was channeled like you would channel Christine to annoy Blaze into waking up and going the fuck to the police. And Christine would do that for any of us. One thousand percent. I would certainly love to scare Blaze, too, because I know so that fun. it would be so fun. I'd be like, Blaze, you are going to learn. Like, yep. <laughs> I've been telling you for years and now you're your going to believe moment. it. And if you don't believe me, then you're not, you know, you can't help solve a crime. So yep. what, what kind of guy do you want to be, Blaze? You know? Yep. And. You know, Dr. Chua, again, he's a doctor. So I think he's also approaching this from like, a okay, my wife is grieving. This is like grief and anxiety that's manifesting in these like bizarre sleep episodes. That's not yeah. like an uncommon thing. Sure. And I don't think if I were a like a respected doctor, I would necessarily want to call the cops and be like, okay, investigators, a ghost is inhabiting my wife at night. Honestly, and telling though, me who this lady's killer is. But if I were to believe anyone, it would be the skeptical n person who believes in medical Same. and science and logic. I'd be like, 100%. if this guy's freaked out, I don't even need to ask questions. Yeah. But, you know, Teresita, in true Christine fashion, fashion would not give up. <laughs> no. <laughs> and kept visiting Remy night after night, who in turn would awake her husband and beg him to tell the police about Alan Showery. Mm. So during one of these episodes, Remy, who is possessed by Teresita asked Dr. Chua why he hadn't gone to the police yet, which I love that. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Get off your ass. Why haven't you gone to the cops? It's like, are you not reading the room, my guy? Like, right. what's happening here? <laughs> Get out there. And Dr. Chua <laughs> is like, well, I guess I'm having a chat with a ghost now. So he responds that just there simply wasn't any evidence pointing to Alan Showery and he can't go implicate someone in a murder based on recurring sleep talking episodes. Like, I can't in good conscience go do that, which is fair and I respect it. Okay, fine. But Teresita had a solution to that. She told him that Alan had stolen some of her jewelry on the night of the murder and gifted it to his own girlfriend. So with something that can oh. actually be like investigated and corroborated, Dr. Chua finally went to the police to disclose what had been going on at his home. Okay. Obviously, the police think this is completely nuts, but also they have... The case is cold. They have nothing else to go on. You might as well go with it. You might as well just see what happens, right? May as well go with it. And this is someone who works at the hospital. It's not like they have no reason to go sure. question this person again. And they had brought in, like, basically anybody who had ever worked with Teresita had already been brought in for questioning. So, like, they've talked to Alan before, so they just wanted to talk to him again. It makes sense. Okay, sure. So they had brought him in previously, but he had presented an alibi that either investigators thought checked out or they just didn't really pay attention to it. Who knows? As you know, I think cops are often useless. That's my hot take. But as they questioned him this time, things are starting to like look suspicious. And I think mm. Alan starts to realize that he got caught or like he's he, like he might be caught. People are sniffing around. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's maybe offering up more info than he previously did. So Alan lived within walking distance of Teresita's apartment. He okay. admitted that he had gone to her apartment that night to fix her television, but that he had oh. gone home. I know, right. That's what they're calling it. That's a, also like, 
that talk old about chestnut. like <laughs> <laughs> well also talk about like a smoking gun like now you've all of a sudden owned up which you didn't before that you yeah. were in her house the night she was murdered ding 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 okay well this is really funny too i found this may not even be true but i found this in one of the articles about this whole debacle that like when they followed up with the girlfriend which they do and we get to it she was like he wouldn't have any fucking clue how to fix a television like that's a bullshit story really like there's no (laughs) way he would have known how to do that that that's not the reason he was over there so she immediately was like "Mm, no that's like if if I ever go somewhere and say like, oh, I was helping them with laundry and the police go to Allison, Allison would be like, um, laugh in their face, be like, lock them up. Like, okay. that's, that's a <laughs> big old fucking lie. Like, I, it's, why, don't you talk to the, why don't you talk to the big mountain of clothes that's in our room right now? Because I'm pretty <gasps> sure nothing's happening. Ooh, I have so much laundry hey, to do. I'll do some you laundry have, tonight. I intentionally... I think I'm going to do more laundry than I ever have because I intentionally underpacked for this literal month long journey I'm on Mm -hmm. so that I have to keep doing my laundry. I don't know. Building habits. I I don't know. You're going to build good habits. I'm at least going to build good travel habits. And then when I get home, I'm going to take the suitcase, unzip it, dump everything on the floor and go, good night. Yep. (laughs) Thousand percent. Or you can do what I do, unzip the suitcase, keep using stuff out of the suitcase for about a month and a half after you've gotten home (laughs) until the suitcase is finally empty. And then you put the suitcase away. Oh, it's not until the suitcase is empty because then it becomes a new laundry hamper. And then it just, and then eventually you build on top of it and I finally do laundry once I have so much clothes that when I start putting the clothes away, I find an old dusty suitcase at the bottom. And I'm like, where did you come from? And then I realize I never put it away four months after my journey. Ooh, I can't wait to up my meds. We are depressed. (laughs) We're nailing it. We share so many habits. I love us. I don't even feel unsafe telling you that. No, It's just a very silly thing that poor poor allison has to live with so i feel bad for her at the end of the day allison and bill should maybe start a their own (laughs) private chat like a grief counseling (laughs) situation (laughs) their own support network (laughs) because i'm fine having a messy room it's once you're in a relationship that all of a sudden you realize that like you can't live in squalor you know yeah and bill is not like the most tidy like I, he he also has clothes out but like i take it to a whole new level oh i make it offensive like yeah, i me too he also owns a, like three things so i i don't want to say how many t-shirts i have but let's i have just say four it's... closets y'all <laughs> two dressers and four closets okay i feel i feel better about myself i'm now. a problem i'm a huge I, let's problem put it this way i have a thick thick uh like wooden dowel that holds all of my hangers Mm -hmm. and it is on the verge of snapping in half because i have so many clothes hanging off of it i love that how i know it's bad so you're amazing and perfect don't change anything okay so (laughs) um so the cops then uh shortly uh where was i that then they spoke with alan's girlfriend who like weirdly enough had Mm received recently received jewelry from her boyfriend alan oh interesting okay and after she had already thrown him under the bus about the TV thing, she was like, "Yeah, I'll bring that jewelry into the police station for examination." Like, she sounds fuck like this she was guy. on her. She sounds like she was on her way out anyway. She was I know. Like, I'd like to think that I'd stand by my man if they were accusing him of murder. But if you know, I do think that sometimes it's like mm, the TV thing. Nah, that did not happen. I again with the laundry thing. I feel like if Allison heard that like I was cheating on her, she'd be like, "That's impossible." But then if it were like he <laughs> ends going somewhere <laughs> else to do laundry, to, she's like. <laughs> no it's like no the whole relationship is completely ruined it's it's irreplaceable irreparable it's gone irreparable yeah oh i love that so um the jewelry was investigated by members of teresita's family and they were able to confirm that the jewelry had belonged to teresita shut up that's so i mean that's like your smoking gun basically Yeah, but also, like, the smoking gun left by a fucking ghost. Like, how crazy is that? Bananas. It's amazing. So, this next part, I am just quoting directly from an article uh, posted by The Lineup. This says, quote, Shortly thereafter, Showery confessed to the crime. He said that after he'd left her apartment the first time, he planned to return and rob her. So, like, he did go over there under the, yeah, I'll come fix your TV, even though he had no fucking clue how to do it. Then he left, and then he went back. I see. I see. Which is I see. also creepy to me. 
I um, yeah, because also a lot of times you they they'll say they come back or they say they will come back and then they never do. It's actually mm-hmm. kind of odd when they do show up again and it isn't for like a I don't know. I feel like a lot of killers will come back to the scene of the crime because yeah, they after they're dead after they're dead but to come mm-hmm. back and like almost do like a round two situation on yeah, a person is so creepy it is really creepy because it shows it shows like a level of premeditation and intent that and a maybe, confidence like and a, a confidence mm-hmm. where he's like oh yeah i'm gonna come over and it's like he was scoping out the place seeing maybe how many neighbors were coming in and out it's just like yeah. he was covering his he was fig like feeling out this situation and then built more confidence to come back knowing that he could assault and kill uh, him. yeah so, and again again it's also confidence of like oh i can also take my time with this whole plan because yep, no one's on to me exactly so he came back to rob her but his efforts yielded little reward because teresita kept very little cash in her apartment so as a result he ended up taking the jewelry that eventually led to his capture without those pieces and Remy's aid, he would never have been caught while his Mm. plan to mask the robbery as a sexual assault quickly unraveled. Okay. So I guess this, I, this, I totally miss in the, it had looked like a sexual assault because she was nude, but then they ran an autopsy because she was like burned, but not so burned that they couldn't do like a rape kit and, and, Sure. do a full investigation of her remains. And sure. so those results showed no indication of sexual assault. Oh, okay. At least in terms of like penetration. Sure. So they were still like, okay, this could be a sex related crime, but we're not, there's like, there's no semen. There's nothing to show that she was penetrated, but that doesn't necessarily rule out right. some kind of assault. But like, that's not what, you know, it, it, we didn't, go, we didn't gotcha. go there. So he, it turns out had stripped her to make it look like it was like a breaking, entering rape robbery, even though oh, okay. it wasn't really that he just wanted to rob her. Sure. And then didn't get what he wanted. And I, he probably got pissed off, stabbed her and then was like, Oh shit. And now then tried to like plant it to make it like look like something else happened. Yeah. Yup. And then the fires had been pretty effective in sto- in destroying any physical evidence at the scene, even though, what they would have been able to collect at the time probably couldn't be properly tested for fucking years. Sure. Um, Showery was charged and tried for Teresita's murder. Despite confessing to his crime to detectives, he pleaded not guilty, which is pretty common. And a lot of lawyers, I think will even recommend doing this because then you can get a plea like, deal or yeah, you can like barter down your sentencing. So I think sure. that's pretty common. When the trial ended in a hung jury, though, it seemed like Showery might get away with murder. But while he waited in prison for a retrial, he had a change of heart and pleaded guilty. Mm. Um, The obvious explanation for his, like, quote unquote, change of heart, though, was there was a sentence reduction and a deal. The the state probably didn't want to go back to trial because if there was a hung jury the first time, you never know what can happen the next time. So they just want to, like, fucking be done with it. Um, but you know, people also thought that maybe Teresita's ghost had visited him in prison and been like, listen, (gasps) motherfucker. That would be so Christine too. That would be like, I would be like, you thought you could get away from this situation. You can't. (laughs) I am here for the ride until you are no longer here either. Exactly. Wow. So I I like to go with that theory because I like to think that she, I like it too. If you have the power to come back after death and say whatever the fuck you want to people, like, I should hope that you would find Use your killer it. and really, I just fucking rip them apart. Get your own justice, honey. I love it. Yeah. So, you know, whether you believe this was supernatural visitation or not, I fully do. I fully do. How Remy got this information remains a complete mystery. So she has, like, always adamantly maintained that Teresita was visiting her in dreams Wow. Is it possible that Remy like overheard some shit while working at the same hospital as the killer? Sure, but there's nothing to sh- suggest in any of the articles I read that he talked openly. Like he kept this a secret, you know. So like, it's yeah, not like he's at work going like, "Oh, I fucking totally killed her, and I stole." some jewelry and gave it to my lady. I mean, it sounds with the information we have, like the only way anyone could have found out is from Teresita herself, who is Mm -hmm. now a ghost. There was also an alleged dispute between Remy and Alan for complaints that he made against her at work that led to her employment 
like with Edgewater being terminated. Mm. So like they maybe had a little bit of bad blood, but also like that's not enough to be like that. He, he stole her jewelry that nobody fucking knew he took. He gave that jewelry to his girlfriend. Like the details that nobody else was able to provide brought closure to Teresita's loved ones and closed this case like period full stop no matter how we think she got them but I'm fully team ghost I'm I'm fully team ghost too Uh 100% and also there's a uh I'm forgetting the name now but there's another story of a ghost solving her own crime Mm -hmm. um so I mean it's happened before yeah so I mean that is what I googled and there were lots of options and then obviously this tiktok came into my life and i was like this is fucking badass yeah so um this case has also been featured on unsolved mysteries and this epic show that i feel like maybe i've screamed at you about before it's called beyond belief it's one you of my have. yes it's one of my favorite terrible shows from the 90s ever and listeners if you have never seen it you have to watch it um <laughs> it's specifically called beyond belief fact or fiction it was hosted by jonathan frakes who is famously like famously played commander Riker on star trek and the <laughs> entire show is just him introducing three different weird stories and then the series like reenacts these stories by terrible actors in the most terrible 90s scenes you've ever seen in your life and then you guess at the end if the story is fact or fiction and he reveals at the end which which ones are fact I wish you could and which te- ones are I fiction. wish you could like text in like American Idol you know? I know that they should have really thought of that it's so yeah. deeply absurd and my friends and I are obsessed with the show and you can watch it online and we are also convinced that Jonathan Frakes is like one of those cis straight guys who like is too enthusiastic about cunnilingus like loves it (laughs) too much there's a line like trust me there's a line and there i have yet to find the line i don't know what you're talking about i've dated one person who was uh, like uh, towing that line and there were moments where i was like "Mm, something's (laughs) off here what makes you think that he is like that just a vibe just something about his face and how like you're gonna hate me so much He's like always shiny. Like I'm convinced his beard is always wet. And it's just like the way that he talks. Like you can just picture Ew. him being like, I just love the taste of what like he just seems like that kind of person. Okay. I know you've given like a, a, a ringing endorsement for this show for other reasons. And yet I'm only going to go now watch it for you his shiny face. You just have to face. watch it with this mindset where it's like, and you'll immediately see it. You'll be like, oh shit. Yep. There it is. Like <laughs> I'm about to YouTube it as soon as we hang up. You'll and find I'm it. Gonna- well, I mean, the timing is perfect because I'm done now. I just had to leave everybody oh. with Frakes is too, too enthusiastic about cunnilingus. He's like, it's like too enthusiastic on to the point where it's bordering on like you're pr- I'm pressuring you into letting me go down on you. That's where that line I feel like is it, it exists. And there guess- are there are dudes out there that are like that. And I am telling you right now, I have nothing to back this up, but he's one of them. I, you know, we started with stick figure porn and we ended with this man's forehead, apparently. It all circles back. Somehow we found a way to loop it all together. I want to do some forensic testing on that beard is really what I'm saying here. (laughs) Come forward, Franks. I want samples. (laughs) Well, maybe be in a room with him long enough and get to know each other. And if you're comfortable, he'll suggest it. Use myself as bait. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm saying for science, it would be would good for it. all of us. I would do it in a heartbeat. Oh my god! I'm okay, in. well, uh, get back to me on that. I'm gonna go watch the episode because I have to know what you're talking about now. Mm-hmm. Okay, and Great. Uh, thank you so much for being on here. I really appreciate you and Kenyon and Lucy all helping out. But I did want you to to be last because you know I you have a special place in my heart. So I love you. If you don't, please go check. First of all, if you're watching YouTube, this is the dumbest thing that's ever happened. This fucking uh, <laughs> I love it. So uh, please go check out Wine and Crime if you have yet to listen to them uh they are all delights as you can tell individually but collectively they're a real rowdy bunch you're on tour now yes so uh as this is coming out in february we're hoping yes that we are currently on tour and is there anything else you need you want to plug i mean just not really i mean check us out head to our website wineandcrimepodcast.com that'll have like all of our tour dates we sell our own line of wine we have all kinds of fun merch 
And you can find us literally anywhere you get your podcasts. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Wine and Crime Pod. Come, uh, come hang. And uh, I thank you again for coming on and teaching me all about this banana story. Yep. Uh, and that's why we drink. drink.